Hi, I'm Ranger Heidi with Jefferson County Open Space. Thanks for tuning into ESI Ecosystems Investigations. In this video series, we'll be exploring the components of an ecosystem, including producers, consumers, and decomposers. One of my favorite things about being a ranger is that, that every day I get to become an ecosystem investigator. I love getting out there and being curious and discovering things about the natural world. Today, you are going to get to be an ecosystem investigator as well and explore the world of decomposers. Before we get started learning about decomposers though, let's go over what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is made up of living and non-living things and their interactions in a specific place. Living things might be things such as plants, animals, insects, fungus, and the non-living things, soil, snow, dirt, fire, Ecosystems can be large like the vast Great Plains, or small like a rotting log, or anything in between. Earth is one big ecosystem. Today I'm visiting you from the Ponderosa Pine Ecosystem in the foothills of Jefferson County. You can be an ecosystem investigator right in your neighborhood park or backyard. The most important thing to remember no matter what ecosystem you're exploring is that everything is connected in an ecosystem. Because everything is connected, that means you and I and all humans are part of them. By understanding how ecosystems function, you can take positive actions to keep them healthy. Let's find out more. There are two very important things that must be passed through an ecosystem in order for living things to survive. One is energy, which comes from the sun. All things need energy to grow and survive. The sun's energy enters an ecosystem through producers. Producers are living things that can make their own food. Most plants are producers and convert the sun's energy into sugars, which they store as food in their roots, leaves, and other parts so they can survive and grow. Most organisms cannot make their own food from the sun's energy and must eat other plants and animals. Organisms that eat other plants and animals are known as consumers. When they do, any energy that is stored in the organism being eaten gets passed on to them. The other thing that needs to be passed through ecosystems in order for them to function are nutrients. Nutrients are elements like calcium, iron, potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen that all living things need to survive. Unlike the energy which comes from the sun, nutrients are found in the soil. They enter the ecosystem by being absorbed into a plant through its roots. When an organism eats a plant or plant eater, those nutrients are passed up the food chain. A large number of nutrients are found in decaying things like animal scat. This one's a rubber replica. Dead animals and their parts or decaying plant material. However, the nutrients found in these things would never be released into the soil again without the small organisms we're going to be talking about in the video. Who are these small recyclers? Decomposers. A decomposer gets its energy from organic waste. Without decomposers, there would be dead and decaying things piled up everywhere. Not only that, there would be no way to get those nutrients back into the food chain. There are different types of decomposers, and each break down dead and decaying matter in different ways. Detritivores, such as ants, roly polies, beetles, millipedes, and worms, break down decaying matter by chewing it up eating it, and then pooping it back out into the environment in smaller, nutrient-rich pieces. Decomposers, such as bacteria and fungi, chemically dissolve decaying material into very simple nutrient molecules that plants are able to absorb into their roots. Now that we understand what decomposers are and the important role they play in nature, let's head out and see if we can find some of these organisms. To go on a decomposer hunt, you'll need several tools. The first thing you'll need is some kind of container to put your decomposer in. Here at the Lookout Mountain Nature Center, we have these special boxes with a magnifying lens on top. You might have something like that at home, but if you don't, a simple jar with some holes poked into the lid works great. Also, it can be handy to have a magnifying glass. This will allow you to look at your decomposers more closely. Again, if you don't have one of these, it isn't essential. Maybe it's something you can add to your ecosystem investigator toolkit later. Another helpful tool to have is a journal to record your observations in. If you don't have one, you can easily make one by taking a couple sheets of paper and folding them in half. Having some knowledge of decomposer habitat when you're searching can be helpful. They really like dark and damp places where there's a lot of decaying matter, like you might find under a log or rock. So when you're looking under a rock, it's really important to lift it up 
And then after you're done searching, put that rock back down exactly as you found it. If you think about it, this is like a roof of an animal's home, and we want to make sure we leave that home in the best condition possible. Also, some rocks will have lichen growing on top of them, so we want to make sure that stays sunny side up so they can survive. When you're flipping rocks too, the safest way to do it is to flip it away from you. So if there's anything underneath that rock, it has a good escape route. Let's head out and search. This looks like a good rock to search under. Looks like there's a few things under here. Treat the decomposers gently. Make sure to carefully release each decomposer where it was found. Centipedes, beetles, and ants may bite, so be careful. You can use a stick to scoot these creatures into your container for viewing. Looks like there's a little millipede there. So I'm gonna put it in my bug box or jar, if that's what you have. And I'm going to pull out my journal. I'm going to sketch what I see on this decomposer. So that millipede is right now all stretched out. It's got lots of legs. A bit of a round head that's probably good for helping it work its way through the soil. Oh, it looks like it just curled up into a spiral. So sometimes when millipedes get frightened, they curl up to protect themselves. So I'm just recording all the different things I'm noticing about this decomposer. It's also covered in some dirt. I found it by some decaying matter, so I think it was feeding. So I'm gonna take as many notes in my journal as I can, which will help me learn about the millipede. Once I'm done, I'm gonna make sure to carefully Release that millipede back under the rock. It's already running away. I'm going to carefully flip the rock back, exactly as I found it. And then I'm gonna move on, see what else I can find. Another great place to look is soil, just bare earth like this, and you can dig around. Sometimes there can be worms in there. It's best to pick a place that doesn't have plants growing in it so that you don't disturb anything. Remember, after you're done with your decomposer hunt, you should leave no trace. It should look like you've never even been there. So I don't see anything in this pile, but I see something behind me that looks really great. Rotten logs are one of the best places to look for decomposers. If you think about it, it's just a pile of decaying plant material. There's actually a little bit of fungus there, so this is already starting to break down some of the wood. Looks like we might have a little roly-poly. So I'll put that in my box. And again, I'll write about it in my journal. So hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the things that you can try at home in your own hunt. Some of the organisms we might spot are roly-polies, millipedes, centipedes, earthworms and other worms, snails and slugs, earwigs, beetles, ants, flies, and fungi. Now it's your turn. When the video is finished, take these tools and techniques and head out in your own backyard or neighborhood park to go on a decomposer hunt. As you find creatures, think about what other organisms in the ecosystem might be connected to them. Do they help anything else survive? How do they live? In what ways? Hopefully you will be able to make many discoveries about these important nutrient recyclers and find out how fun it is to explore nature as an ecosystem investigator. As you investigate, also think of actions you can take to help keep ecosystems healthy. Here are some ideas. Pick up pet waste. When out on a walk or hike with a pet, immediately pick up any waste that leaves behind, pack it out to a trash can, and encourage others to do the same. When many dogs leave behind waste in a natural area, existing decomposers cannot keep pace in breaking it down, and the environment becomes polluted. This has negative impacts on wildlife, plants, and water quality. Pick up litter. Litter can quickly build up in the environment, polluting ecosystems and injuring wildlife. 
Decomposers can only break down things made of natural materials. They cannot decompose certain man-made items such as plastic, glass, or aluminum, which stay around for a very long time. Even man-made things made out of natural materials, such as cardboard, can take several months or more to break down. Reuse and recycle. To prevent things from even becoming trash, consider using reusable items instead of disposable ones. For instance, on your next hike, you could bring a reusable water bottle or snack containers. When reusable items aren't an option, try to choose recyclables to reduce waste. These are only a few ideas to help. Can you think of any others? Remember, everything is connected in an ecosystem, and you can make a huge positive impact by taking action to keep them healthy. On behalf of Jefferson County Open Space, I want to thank you for joining us for this video. I hope you have fun on your future adventures as an ecosystem investigator.